down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, and maybe a few girls, because no girls text me and say, hey, they listen to the radio show. You need to be listening to the radio show because you tuned in to the Savvy, Savvy, Savvy Somebody radio show with your host, Steve Van Kallenberg, and should be my co-host. Co-host. Sucks. Uh, he lives so far away, but we could do this on a co-host once a month, big boy, Thomas Morgan. Bang, bang. What's up, guys? Bang, Rain bang. Woo. Dude, we should do it. We should, we should have our own, our own po- your own podcast. And that we're hosts of it. So, like, it's like the Thomas Morgan Show and Savvy as your host and start creating another channel and you start right. just taking over your arena. But anyway, man, I'm super stoked uh, that I'm pushing myself. And that's what you got to do. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You can't lay lie, m- become a millionaire just thinking about it. You got to do and test things. I know you test everything all, all, all the time. I know you're testing marketing. I yes. know you're testing all kinds of stuff. And right now I'm testing that I'm doing this video at the same time as doing a podcast. Wow. Thought yeah. that would never oh. happen. It's awkward to be like looking at a microphone and then looking at you. But, but the ultimate goal, why we're doing this podcast today slash video slash is that you, that you are hosting Investor Weekend March 8th and 9th. Yes, and, uh, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And you're not the big speaker like you are here in Oklahoma City. No. You are, you are sitting down at a round table, but you have some of your homeboys coming uh, to Investor Weekend 19. Yeah. Who's coming? Tell me who's coming. I've got Stephen Van Kallenberg of you. <laughs> uh, SavvyLandlordBook.com, known author. I'm bringing Jeffrey Taylor of MrLandlord.com. Jeffrey's a huge name. He's actually, his policies and procedures have truly like really affected my life and my business. I'm bringing in Al Williamson. He's an expert on creative housing and corporate housing, running stuff. He's expert in raising capital and getting maximized rents just on running, like he runs corporate housing and subsidizes between his leases with Airbnb. So he's always turning 100% plus occupancy it's pretty amazing what how he does it i'm bringing in amy biggs lopez uh she's out of murfreesboro and other Cl- not murfreesboro clarksville tennessee she's a local expert on just running and managing contractors and how she treats her business is pretty impressive to me so i'm trying to bring in as many quality speakers and people that have truly affected my business to help other people in chattanooga grow awesome well That's a star-studded lineup. Can't wait to just share the stage with those folks. I'm going to be rocking private money pretty hard. But let's talk a little bit about Thomas Morgan. Tell me about a deal. Your your, your main thrust of of business is that, yes, you are a landlord. Yes, you have some commercial property. And speaking of commercial property, but your main thrust is wholesaling. And the property that you're sitting in right now, was that from your wholesaling efforts? No, actually, it was just a had a property just down the road on 32nd Street, and I was going to see one of my tenants one day. That was it was one of my nuisance tenants I had to have a conversation with, and I just drove by and saw a little tiny like Ace Hardware for sale by owner sign on the mass on the side of this giant building, and it was kind of old and run down. So I stopped and pulled over and called the guy, and talked to him. He said. I was like, when can I see inside? And he said, I'll be there in about an hour. So I dro- actually went driving for the dollars for another 30, 40 minutes and went and waited for him, came and looked at it and tried to offer him terms, tried to offer him, tried to be creative with him. And he was just determined on 30,000 cash. So I was like, I knew it was a deal. I thought I could wholesale it. And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to keep it and make a because it was kind of a cool old structure. Well, how'd you know it was a deal? What's ARV? He wanted thirty thousand dollars cash. What did it look like? What was the condition? Uh, it was it was in bad shape. He had power on to it, but he was just paying the meter. He, okay, what's what's the size of the property? It's a about a thirty eight hundred square foot warehouse. There's two thousand square foot of warehouse space, and about eighteen hundred square foot of office space now on the front. So the guy has on the sign thirty thousand dollars and. 
that he's trying to get for the property? What's the ARV or what's the value? And now this is, and keep in mind, this is on a major drag because this is the property I went to, right? When I came yeah. and visited. And yeah. actually this is a property where I've loaned you money on. <laughs> yeah, uh, long story, but. No, 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 keep going. We, we want to know the we details. Get further what's... into the deal. Um, I'm, if you guys know about me, I'm horrible. I'm not a bank financing person. And you kept pushing me. You need to get your bank books together. You need to get books together and get a bank loan. So I was like, okay, I was determined this is going to be the deal. I'm good. I filled out all my personal financial statements, like went crazy, got ex like got as professional as I could. And from the hood. <laughs> yeah. Gave it to this banker and he's like, yeah, I can loan on that. I was like, okay, kind of jumped through the hoops for them. And you were a little nervous and too, right? You didn't believe I, it. I was horribly nervous because I didn't want to lose the deal. It was a, I knew it was a deal. Well, what's ran, the ARV? We haven't even got to the ARV. When I ran the comps, comps came out uh, 150 to 215. And I had a contract wow. on this thing for 30,000. And I was like. So, okay. So you didn't do, you didn't do the Thomas Morgan negotiations when you got it I under. Tried. I offered to do 35. If you'd take terms, I offered him a. I think I offered him 19 cash, uh, 30 with no money or with like two grand down and 35 with no money down. And he just wanted out. He, so, so you knew in your mind that you had this smoking deal, $150,000 minimum. It's on a busy street. It's in an up and coming. I, I love that you say this is on a path of progress. I, I love us stealing all your quotes, but the path of progress. And so you knew this was slipping through your hands or it could be, but you had to come up with cash relatively yeah. quickly and you're used to terms on everything that's usually your motor on day you try to i try to buy as much as i can on cash or creative or with either cash or creative financing or private lenders like i'm not the go to the bank guy okay. where me and you are polar opposites on that manner sure well so you, how many units do you have no, i'm just playing <laughs> we're polar opposite <laughs> yeah you want a slow train or you want the big train <laughs> you know well, i'm trying to get you on a big train <laughs> well Beep, beep. So it goes back and forth. The guy was supposed to clean out the property. Um, he would have basically in the front half of the building, he had a thread wholesaling business. Wow. And in the back half, he had a resale yard sale business with like 10 foot high shelves, aisles in the warehouse. And he was just yard selling full time. He'd open up the roll up doors and sell stuff out of it. The, so this was like his his big store. Make sure you talk louder in that microphone. Yeah, so he, he he so he was his big like storage unit. So this guy owned his property. And he owned the property and was reselling. He was just a professional yard seller out of the back of it. Really. Well, so did he? I mean, did he know the value of the property? I mean, it's just awkward. Like if I was a rookie investor, oh yeah, this is a once in a lifetime dream. Like. How do you, what's the disparity? Was he uneducated, the seller from 30,000? He was just motivated. He knew it was in rough shape. He had bought out two like baby stores and then had a heart attack and locked it up for five years and was just paying on it. He didn't have insurance on it. He didn't, it was, he was a little nuisance. bit behind on taxes, but he didn't physically couldn't come down and clean it out. And most of the stuff in the store had been ruined because the roof had leaked. So he was just motivated to sell. Okay, so you're telling I me mean, you're telling me this thing was dilapidated in some form or fashion. It was leaking, uh, and oh, yeah, and it. So, all right, so let's just get back to it. Well, now we're back to the bank. So the bank said, "Yeah, we can loan on it." The appraisal came in at what one hundred and fifty or? Um, they, I don't think they ever ordered an appraisal. I kept going through and I contacted the bank. We were like a week before closing. I'm like, "Hey, I haven't. I wanted to follow up. I haven't heard anything from you guys on this." And the banker calls me and says, oh, you want it that still? And it was like <laughs> devastating. I'm like a week before closing. I've kind of counted on this money. Yeah. And <laughs> they just pull the rug out from underneath me. So I called you, ironically. I called a couple, pe couple people about it. And I ta remember talking to you and you're like, well, I got the money in my IRA. I just don't have time. Yes. I can, I'll loan you the money, but if you, but you got to figure out how to do it. So I remember having to go through and contact your IRA custodian and work out everything that they needed from mortgage docs to contracts, to uh, submitting the appraisals for them, to 
getting the term sheet and getting everything set up and wired. And amazingly, you saved my deal. And, and at that time, I was doing my own deals. I really wanted to, you taught me to really exercise my IRA. I, at that time, I wasn't. So on my side, I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, sure. And you, you were, how much did, did you ask me for only 15,000? I can't remember. Do you remember? Uh, I think I borrowed 35,000 because I bar I needed to close on the property. I had a little bit of closing costs and I needed oh, yeah. to get dumpsters to clean the thing out. So you, you, you're telling me you bought a $150,000 asset for no money down and cash at closing to repair the property on a private landing. Is that? Yeah. I okay. Mean, so then how did you, what'd you do from there? So you, 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 you got lucky with the great private lender that was real easy to work with. Basically you did all the work. Sure. All right. Your mic is going low there. What happened? True. There you go. Get, get close, baby. Get close. We got, we want to hear you. So then what was the, what kind of repairs did you do and what's it like now? Is this one of the, your best deals that you've ever done or? Uh, uh, personal gain wise. And like, it's hard to put a number on it. Cause to me, I'm using it as my personal office. It's one kind of a dream space for me, the way we've created it. Yes. I love the exposed brick. I love the floor. I love the colors. I remember always having this dream. I wanted a commercial space with like an office in the front, a warehouse in the back and an apartment up above. And like those old two story brick buildings are always, I've always just loved how they look and felt. So, so what kind of repairs did you do? Did you have to put a new roof on? How'd you handle uh, all those? That was one of the first things we had to do. I had them put a roof on it while we were getting the inside cleaned out. Uh, I had some cash from another deal. I just liquid or just sold on a rehab. So I had about 35 grand cash to put into the building. So, so your total first, all in is about 70,000. I'm probably in it closer to 85 right now, but still, still that's 50% your yeah. equity. You could be borrowing that equity. <laughs> I, I need to, I need to put a line of credit against it. Well, you need to get up, pay all your money back, you know, in at least your capital, the 35,000 of your own money, the private lender, which is me, you could leave that alone because I'm making money off of you. And I'm, I'm very happy of your $450 check or whatever well, you say. I was able to hustle and pay it off in less than a year. Oh, that's that one loan. We, we've done more than one loan since yes. then. You actually lent me money on the, at one point I had the opportunity to buy the house next door. That was pretty dilapidated. And ironically, I was always advertising, we buy houses on the side of my building. And I can't tell you how many times, well, why don't you just buy that one next door? People knock on my door, or other investors I'd have come by it started irking me for a while. So I ended up, I knew the land adding it to my building was more of a value. And I thought I was going to be able to rehab the house. And we ended up borrowing, I bought the house for like 15. We ended up tearing it down. But I thought I was going to be able to rehab it. But it was the center beam. It was just too far gone. It would have been easier to just tear it down and start new. So I'm hold, still holding out. So yeah, keep going. Sorry. <clears throat> I use it for my own business and store vehicles and trailers and materials and stuff over there. Or do I go over and build on it and just fence in the entire property and live free and clear? Or I love your creative idea. Put um, those containers and make a container house. Yeah. And, you know, I love your creativity. All right, let's wrap this up. What, what advice would you have given or where have you gone wrong on this that you should have sharpened it up a little bit? Um, I should have, I mean, I really should have got the guy to clean it out or give me a credit for cleaning it out. Cause I spent close to five or six grand in dumpsters, just getting it emptied. Wow. Which, so ceiling floor to ceiling, huh? Yeah. It was 10 foot high, 2000 square foot of junk. We were able to yard sale some of it off. I should have just threw it all away. Uh, yeah. I've had... I've had a couple of different experiences. I should have got a better brick mason. Uh, I think it would have done a better quality job. I could have, there's a couple of different things. I look in hindsight, I should have done better or I could have done better. No, different. And that's, but you know, and, and let's, let's talk I about a couple love things. my space. Yeah. I, I love it too. I think, it, I mean, just looking at it through the video, it looks incredible. And I know you're going to do like a, like a show video of what you can do. Now let's talk to people that never done real estate before. Listen, I know I sound like some big bad lender, but I actually just started with uh, a $50,000 IRA 
And over this length of time, since I've known Thomas about five or six years, I've loaned to him three times. So it doesn't sound like I'm like a millions of dollars. I loan it to him. He, re, he gets the cash and pays me back over time. And then I loan it to him again. That's a relationship. So you can, yeah. you can do this. Anyone can do what we're talking about. I know it sounds glamorous. Wow, where do you find a $200,000 building that now you only owe 85 or it's worth 150, it's 50%. Just work. What, you know, I know that you're gonna host the, the round table and you're hosting the whole event and wholesaling is your gift. What advice would you give to a rookie wholesaler or someone that never um, done this before and how can they get going? I mean, one of the easiest things is find a mentor. Get somebody that's actually doing it and talk to them, help them, add value to their life. Don't just go out and ask for stuff for free, but it, it, by adding value, how can I help your, what can I do to make a deal with you or, or do you want a JV and partner on deals? I, I can't tell you how many deals I've done in my market with other investors or newer investors that have just brought me a deal. Sure. Uh, just building relationships. I mean, that's how we met. Yeah. I mean, we met, I mean, I, and I will never forget this, but <clears throat> I wasn't a big fan when I met you. Nothing negative, nothing was wrong with it. You were just, you're extremely young. You're like 10 years younger than me, right? Is that how, yeah. you, know, you know, you're 10, I'm 35. So you're around, th I mean, I'm 45 and uh, you're, you're around that age and you were nice. But when I met you at, at this luncheon, like the event that we're doing in March 8th, 2019, you know, I was there to prospect for private money. I was there to connect yeah. with other investors that, that they can help me in Oklahoma. And, you know, we didn't chat that day. You didn't uh, say much to me. And I knew you were a wholesaler. And I really didn't like wholesalers because the wholesalers in Oklahoma City you don't, don't give no love. Only love is the Benjamins. They will sell out for 500 bucks. Seriously, I've lost deals over $500. And that's okay because that's them. Is this is a lifelong game for me. And then one day you sent me a photo. You sent me an email of when I was on stage speaking and no one's ever done that before. And of course it was an iPhone, which I'm an anti iPhone person, but <laughs> uh, it was a pan pan panoramic uh, deal. And I was so just honored. And then I, <clears throat> that was like a month went by, you were on my mind and you know, you're like wholesale, wholesale. I make so much money. I'm, I, you know, I do $10,000 a month at that time and you were doing so many deals you couldn't even keep up. And I'm like, this dude, what's wrong with this guy? And then I got an opportunity on a wholesale deal that I could lock up and I would have passed on it. I randomly called you up and said, hey, I don't know if you remember me, but can you help me with this wholesale deal? I know I'm missing the boat. And you're like, yeah, mother. Oh, it was a uh, like a deal your bank, you were buying as a rental and you're like, yeah, it's not really a deal for me. I'm like, why don't you just assign it to somebody? And I was like, what? What are you talking about? Well, I knew about assignments, but I was like, you know, but I was scared because if I passed on it, nobody would buy it. And you, that's probably the one thing you should talk about at the round table is lock it up is because it may not be a deal for me because it's not three bedroom, two bath, let's say, or whatever my, my parameters have changed over the years. And but you, you convinced me and I, you know, I made $8,000 off that deal. I, I split it with that. You, you taught me another thing, JV. And I split that deal with the local wholesaler, Sean McVicker, who owns Speedy House Buyers. He um, JV'd with me and I really didn't do anything. I, I was nervous. I was calling you all the time. They changed the locks without, <laughs> without telling me. And yeah. uh, uh, right. you know, I, you know, I made four G's that that's where, you know, a, a relationship can start at a lunch table at an event like Investor Weekend. And that's, that's what it's about. We're about helping each other grow. I'm successful because of you. I hope that I've, obviously, the building that you're sitting in. Yeah, and you've honor, added over $100,000 to my life. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. So, all right, Thomas, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to wrap this up. So, what, what advice? Did, did you answer that question? <laughs> yes. You did? <laughs> Take action, add value, find a mentor. Okay. And then how about throw out a bandit sign? Uh, depending on your city. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I really appreciate your time. Can't wait to see you in like 40 days and I'm juiced up. Talk to you soon.
Investor Weekend is not far off with over 10 information sessions to increase your portfolio. Log on to www.investorweekend.com. Whether you are a seasoned investor or never purchased a property before, you don't want to miss the Investor Weekend. Join us for a powerful, knowledge-packed weekend with over 10 informational sessions that are bound to enlarge your real estate investments. You will hear from the best national and local real estate investors that will share practical and relevant experiences with you, the investor. There will be several networking sessions to connect with other like-minded people for potential funding, partnerships, and yes, hot deals. Go to www.investorweekend.com. Did you know we meet once a month for the Landlord Lunch Meeting? The third Wednesday of every month, go to landlordlunch.com. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 